Minister Arce, thank you so much for joining us on America's Now. Thank you for the invitation. Describe Bolivia's economy at the moment. Well, uh, in order to start, we have to speak about how was Bolivia in 2005, for example. Uh, we, ha we were the poorest country in the region. We have 38% uh, of uh, poverty in Bolivia. Uh, we have a very a highly concentrated income in few hands at that moment, the highest, uh, one of the highest uh, unemployment rate. But now things have changed since 2006, since President Evo took the power at the time. Now we have a growth rate in average 5%, even during this crisis, you know where many countries in, the, in South America are, they have uh, uh, growth rate, negative growth rates. Uh, we, are, we have so far, and this time, this year, we will have also the highest growth rate in the region. So for, for third consecutive year, Bolivia will be the highest growth rate uh, in the region. We used to be the, lo the poorest country in the region, Fortunately, and because of the social policies that we have applied uh, since 2006, uh, we are not anymore the poorest country in the region. We have increased the income, the, the per capita income, uh, from 1,000 US dollars to more than 3,200 uh, uh, US dollars. So we have improved it. We uh, have reduced the poverty. We have included more. M uh, all people in the in the economy, especially indigenous people, also have reduced the difference between rich people and uh, poor people. The uh, ten percent richer and against the ten percent uh, uh, poorer in the in the region where in Bolivia was uh, 128 times. Now it's only 32 times. We have reduced it, and of course, we haven't become uh, you know to the rich people poorer. What we have done is, you know, uh, become more richer to the poor people. So those are the changes. We have improved uh, also in health and education in Bolivia with good results. So I think Bolivia is doing very, very well, it, even taking into account the time, the, the, the crisis, international crisis times that uh, all the world is living. Uh, the prices are went down. And people used to talk about that. They said uh, Bolivia is doing good because of the international prices. But th th since 2011, you know, the uh, mining prices and even uh, afterwards, the, in 2014, the oil prices uh, also went down. But Bolivia is still growing, uh, still developing, and uh, uh, that's because of our, of our new model, uh, a new economic model. We call it the social, economic, uh, communitarian, productive model from Bolivia. Uh, I wrote a book about that. <laughs> uh, so um, I think the new model in Bolivia, uh, which combines uh, economic and social policies, is doing well in Bolivia, and the results are there. You can see in the figures that the World Bank, IMF, even all the uh, international organizations publishes uh, every time. I know that for the government, the development of energy, the development of infrastructure have been big priorities, uh, as well as bringing in more foreign investment. How is all of that coming along? Well, we combine the foreign direct investment with the internal investment. Uh, you know, uh, for example, in the public investment, uh, we are driven, uh, the, the public investment is driven the growth rate in, in Bolivia. In the past, uh, Bolivia used to invest $600 million per year. Last year, we invest more than $4.5 billion in infrastructure. It means roads, um, hospitals, uh, and you know everything we are building up. And uh, we try to do it the uh, strategic things uh, under the state uh, control and by the state companies. But also, we have some projects that we can combine with the private sector. So it, it means that we, we are trying to uh, you know, bring more foreign direct investment in Bolivia uh, to combine with a private investment or a public investment in order to increase the potential in, in 
investing in all the fields, uh, especially in tourism, uh, in manufacturing, and, and so on. So I think uh, th this combination of public investment, especially the public investment, which is the engine of the growth, and the public investment, rather either the domestic and the uh, foreign direct investment, are doing well, very well working together with the state. I want to touch on infrastructure for a moment. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi was recently in Bolivia yeah. meeting with your president. Uh, there was an announcement of a $4 billion plus loan to help with infrastructure. Yeah. Talk to us about ties between Bolivia and China and how that relationship has evolved. I think the relations we have with China are the best in all over the time, you know. Um, there are very um, uh, interesting um, similarities uh, between China and Bolivia, not only because uh, if you look at the revolution uh, that Mao Zedong did in the past, came from the field, from the rural area to the cities, you know, and the, the what's going on in Bolivia is almost the same. President Morales comes from the rural area. He came from the, you know, he was uh, uh, growing coca, coca leaves, and from the uh, countryside, the revolution came to the city. So it's very similar way of uh, doing that. And secondly, uh, the, similar the similarities is also that the uh, we w we want a bigger country, as uh, in at that time Mr. Mao Zedong said in in the books, in his books. So um, we are trying to do the same to building up a new country. Uh, investing a lot of money. So there are politically a lot of coincidence. And also, uh, with this good relationship that we have with China, we got uh, some time ago $6.5 billion of loan. Uh, and why is that? Because the Chinese people, I mean the Chinese government, uh, sees in, in, in Bolivia a lot of opportunities of business because, of course, there are many uh, Chinese companies working in Bolivia. There are a lot of opportunities for yeah, them, yeah. but also for the Bolivian people because we have we are building roads, we are building hospitals, we are building um, schools. I mean, uh, so uh, we take advantage of these relations in order to uh, increase our companies, I, the Chinese ones, but also the Bolivian ones. Your country has uh, made a living from mining and natural gas, and it suffered a tragedy recently with the death of a government minister during protests uh, with miners. How, how is the country doing right now, and have tensions eased? Uh, what they wanted, it was against the Constitution. They wanted to uh, make agreements with international companies. That was not because of the mining sector is doing badly. There was because they wanted to, to receive more money from uh, transnationals, the kind of, uh, mining, sec mining companies that wanted to come to Bolivia. And uh, that was not allowed uh, constitutionally. Constitutionally, only the state has the right to make agreements with any enterprise, either international or national enterprises. So, so that's why uh, it, it was the problem. We um, we have a good s uh, a strong sector in the hydrocarbon sector in, in in the hydrocarbons, and we are industrializing the hydrocarbons. We are now going to produce urea from the gas, you know. So we are in, in we are diversifying the Bolivian economy in order to sell more to the world, but to receive more value added also from our national resource. The model is very simple in Bolivia. We have a lot of national resources. Bolivia is one of the richest country in national resources. But when you know, look at uh, the mirror and you look at your pockets, uh, the Bolivian people didn't never have money. So we decided to develop using our national resources, industrialize them, diversifying the economy in order to avoid this kind of problems. When you know Bolivia, uh, as many countries in South America, depend on the uh, commodities prices. So. When they don't go go down, you know you have you are in problem. That's why we are introducing more industrialization in the national resource mining. Uh, we have lithium. We are one of the richest uh, countries in lithium in, in the world. Uh, so we we're, we're gonna become you know the one of the biggest player in the in the lithium uh, market. And also we have uh, iron. 
we have many mineral minerals, but also we have hydrocarbon, but also we have a very potential, a big potential in uh, food. Uh, and, we, uh, and I'm talking about organic food, because there's a difference. Uh, yeah, I don't know how is the debate here in the U.S. about the uh, trans, uh, transgenic or organic, but in Bolivia it's a, st it's a very strong debate. Uh, we believe that the organic food should be paid much better than the, or the, the non-organic food. And Bolivia produces, you know, basically organic foods. And we talked about uh, Bolivia's economy, its relationships, industry. What would you want the international community to know about Bolivia that they may not have heard before? Where should they visit? What should they know? Well, I think two things. First, uh, that we have a new Bolivia. A new Bolivia that uh, we have already free of elitarism, for example, for example, you know, we one of the few countries in South America that is free of elitarism. Uh, we have now a new model, which is uh, you know improving all the people, especially the standard of living of Bolivia has improved a lot in these uh, days. And the second thing that the, com the international community has to know about Bolivia is that there's a lot of opportunities there for investing, for visiting tourists. Bolivia is very rich in very places, you know, uh, Uyuni Salar, which is very no, well known for everybody, especially Asian people. Uh, they, they go very well uh, to, to, this, uh, to this Salar. And uh, we have a lot of uh, places uh, and a huge opportunities for everybody to come to Bolivia and to make business. Uh, of course, uh, under the rules that are very clear, the uh, strategic sectors, I'm, I'm talking about hydrocarbons, I'm talking about mining, I'm talking about electricity, uh, have to be under the state control. But the others are free. I mean, everybody can make uh, manufacturing, hotels, tourism, and so on. Uh, and we are receiving a foreign direct investment, because especially from Spain, from Brazil, from Peru, you know, many countries, United States, of course, we are receiving a lot of money from there, uh, which is, you know, enhance the, the, the engine we have for growth. Mr. Luis Arce, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you.